Congressman Michael Beach, I'm oh, sorry. And that's why I have voted for a deadline to bring our troops home. I'm proud that Senator Snow has voted for a deadline to bring our troops home. Mike Michio has voted for a deadline to bring our troops home. We're going to come back in, in uh, September, October, and I hope and believe that we will once again pass legislation to set a deadline to bring our troops home. And this time, what we need, you said Iraq is way beyond politics. It is. This time, what we need is Senator Collins' vote. I don't know if we'll get it, but we need it. We need the votes of Republicans in the Senate. We need votes of Republicans in the House all across this country. And I don't care why they vote. They can be terrified of losing in the next election, or they can be actually convinced, finally, that the policy is a failure and we need to change it. I don't care. I just want them to change their votes and vote to bring our troops home so that before George Bush leaves office, we can actually change this policy. And the only way we're going to do it is by a vote with Republican support in the House and the Senate. Now, I have another longer range plan. We need your help on this too. If we can't change this policy, the President's policy in Iraq this fall, then we have to change it in the, 19, 2000, in the 2008 election. We have to have a policy change all across this country that will sweep out those who have voted for this war, who have refused to change the policy, and simply, no matter how much pressure, no matter how much pressure—that's what—that's what this democracy is all about. This is the single biggest issue in Maine and across the country, and you can't ever give up. Don't ever give up what you're doing to end this war. I know you're making phone calls. I know you're leafleting around the state. I know you're helping in every way you can to end this war. Don't ever give up. Keep the faith. Keep fighting. I want to take you back for a moment. It's 2002. September 2002, the President's Chief of Staff said, if you're marketing a new product, you don't roll it out in August. And so they rolled out an invasion of Iraq in September, in Labor Day. And they made the last two months before the 02 election all about whether or not you were patriotic and would support the President's plan to invade Iraq, or whether you were undermining support for our troops and unwilling to defend the country against terrorists. That's how they framed it. That's how they framed it. We have seen that kind of manipulation of the news manipulation of information for too long, and we cannot let it happen again in September or October of this year. We cannot, and you are vital to making sure that it doesn't. You have to tell the truth. You have to be out there talking to people who will, and, and making it clear to them that when they say things are getting better in Iraq, they're, they're talking about differences so small that they don't change the life of one Iraqi and his daily life walking around Baghdad or anywhere else in the country. They're not talking about that kind of success. They're not talking about no one. When we were talking to Petraeus and uh, Crocker, they never said, you have to listen to what they say, and then you have to listen to what they don't say. They never said, you know, the political situation is getting better. The Sunnis and the Shia are compromising their differences. They never said that. I was listening. They never said it because it wasn't happening. And the Iraqi Prime Minister admitted as much when he said, we won't resolve our political differences by September or even by, by next September. So the only way we're going to stop this war is with your help. Now back in October of 2002, when, when frankly the media was all swept up in this, too much of the American media was all swept up in this war, um, I voted against it. I, John Baldacci and I... John Spratt and I, John Spratt of South Carolina, and I put together an alternative resolution. It was a, what it was a resolution that required a broader coalition, a second UN specific vote. It would have, the purpose of it was, to slow down the rush to the war and prevent, and prevent the administration from invading in 2003. 
I was pretty sure they weren't going to invade in 2004 because 2004 was an election year and there was too much risk in it. Carl Grove knew that. So, and we got 155 votes for that resolution, but it wasn't enough. And in face of all of that manipulation, all of that uh, misleading information about the intelligence, all of that, uh, uh, all of the scare tactics, I know that there were people who went over to the White House, they came back and said to me, well, you know, the president says they've got a nuclear program. And I would say to them, well, Mohammed el Baradai, the nuclear weapons inspector, is over there in Iraq. They've got an inspection program, and they are saying they can find no evidence of a weapon, nuclear weapons program. Don't you think that Dick Cheney and George Bush would tell them where the nuclear program was being carried out if, they, if Cheney and Bush knew where it was? And the same was true for chemical and biological weapons. We had this whole effort out there uh, by, by uh, what's his name? Hans Blitz. Hans Blitz, thank you. Hans Blitz. He was over there looking for chemical and biological weapons. He couldn't find any. Don't you think Dick Cheney and George Bush would have told Hans Blitz, <laughs> go over here, here's where the weapons of mass destruction are? So we know now, I figured then, that they didn't know where there were weapons of mass destruction, but that didn't help them, that didn't stop them from basically coming out to the American people and selling us a bill of goods. The most costly bill of goods this country has ever been sold. We were sent, we, they sent this country into war on the basis of false information, and it's the result has been $500 billion for mortgaging our future and uh, forcing our kids to pay the bill. So far, 3,700 plus American lives lost. Actually, those are just the soldiers, another 1,000 plus of American contractors and tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of Iraqis. You can't ever give up. You can't ever give up. Because I believe, you know, I, this is a horrible situation we're in, but I believe we are going to win. We are going to stop this war. And I don't know if we're going to stop it in September or October, but we are going to stop it one way or the other. And all I ask from you is to don't get discouraged, don't ever get discouraged, keep your spirits up, keep talking to people, and we will win. We will win. We will stop. We will.